So thank you guys for coming to this talk. I'm gonna talk about how to think like a 3D designer. So there's a few topics that I'm gonna talk about today. And here they are. I'm gonna talk about, a, it's gonna be a brief introduction to 3D printing. I'm gonna go into the different technologies that exist, not just plastic printing. How design for 3D printing differs from conventional manufacturing. How to do design for 3D printing. I'm gonna introduce you to our product. And then we're gonna have it's less of a design challenge because uh, we weren't able to do a hands-on workshop like we'd originally thought we'd be able to do because of internet access and things like that. But we're going to have a good discussion around what would you guys design if you could? What problems would you solve using 3D printing? All right. Let's get started. So this is a really interesting process. It's called selective laser sinter. This is a powder-based process to do metal, plastic printing, but the, the main application, the key differentiator here is metal. So you can work with a bunch of different metals. The key takeaway with the powder-based processes is you can only work with one metal at a time. So what it does is they take a layer of powder, they spread the layer of powder out within the build volume. Then a laser comes in from above and shines down exactly on the spot that you want, and it sinters the powder. Then you put down another layer of powder, you sinter the powder where you want it, and that fuses the two layers together. And you do that over and over and over again until you ultimately produce a part. This process is a very, very slow process. The, the layers of powder are anywhere between 25 and 50 microns a piece, and it takes about a minute to two minutes just to spread the powder. So you're talking about quarter, or sorry, 0.025 millimeters every two minutes. So it's a really, really, really slow process. And that's just for the spreading of the powder, let alone the time that the laser needs to raster around. One of the other main drawbacks is in order to print something about this size in a selective laser sintering machine, you need at least a machine that's this big. As you can see up there, it's about three meters by five meters-ish. And, and it's not just the machine. There's powder handling systems, there's a furnace that you need for afterwards to be able to make sure that the part is of good quality. And here's a really interesting point. It's kind of down in the weeds, technically a little bit. But the powder itself is very difficult to control. I'm not sure if you can see. I'm gonna use the cursor here for a second. You've got tiny little powders, like this one right here, and then big ones. And what they're trying to do is, it, you can use kind of an analogy with spheres, is if you have four spheres that you're trying to pack in together, there's always gonna be this interstitial space. And what they try to do is mix in small powder to fill in that space. Because the only way to fill in that space otherwise is to overheat it. So you can put, you can dump a bunch of energy in to get the metal to expand. But the more it expands, the more it shrinks when it cools. And that means that your parts aren't going to come out to tolerance. So one of the, the rules of thumb with a process like this is if you want to print something, it usually shrinks 30 to 40%. So you can't really hold any tolerances. It's near net shape at best. It doesn't get you what you want right out of the machine. And that's just inherent in the thermodynamics of the process. 